بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد We give thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every blessing. Allah the Almighty. Start the Surah Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. All praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, the Lord is Allah. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, the message that to Allah, the Lord is Allah. But therefore, Allah Azza wa Jal start with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, praising Allah, the Almighty, the Lord of the universe. Last week, Alhamdulillah, we have spoken about the ghusl, reach the bar, uh, we've spoken about how we perform it and why do we perform it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned you know, you read Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wants to make things easy for you. <laughs> Islam in itself is easy. Like how the Prophet Muhammad mentioned, Islam is easy. Whoever makes it hard or fall into extremism, Islam is going to overtake him. Which means you're going to feel that Islam is hard and he will not be able to continue. Whenever there's any kind of path that is hard, you don't usually carry on the path, yes or no? You don't carry on, you stopped. But Islam is not like this. Islam is easy in itself. For who are those who actually find Islam hard? Are those people who innovate into the religion? Are those people who are actually bringing the deen into a way that they want? Not like the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah, Islam is easy. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make things easy. يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Allah says, indeed, he wants to make things khafif upon you. Because he has made insan in some kind of weaknesses way. Allah Azza wa Jal has given alternatives for everything. But there's one thing that did no compromise. If ever you're not able to fast, Huh? You can skip the day and replace it after. Yes or no? If you're not able to give zakah, you can give later on. You're not able to go for hajj, you can do it later on. But if ever when it comes to salah, even though you are on the battlefield, you have to pray. Even though you are on your bed in the hospital, you have to pray. There's nothing that says, okay, I will not pray Maghrib and Isha today, I'll pray tomorrow. Nothing like this in Islam. Whoever misses a prayer, Amdan, Bila Udur, whoever misses a prayer without any excuse, he has fallen in one of the Kabair, in one of the major sin. And now what he has to do? He had to replace that prayer and make tawbah to Allah Azza wa Jal. But now this brings us to the reason why Allah has made something called tayammum. Ya Allah, if there's no water, maybe we can delay the prayer. Yes or no? This is what we think. There's no water for wudu. 
Maybe I delay the prayer. Ah. There's no water. فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا If there's no water, there's no excuse, my friend. You still have to pray. You still have to pray. But today, inshallah, we're going to speak about tayammum, which is known to be as the dry ablution. Tayammum, known as the dry ablution. When do we do it? And how do we do it? And what is the purpose of tayammum? We're going to speak about that today. Maybe I can put that on online over here. If it works, yeah. What is tayammum? It is you got a wallet? Are there slippers? I'm just checking his uh his name. <laughs> hey, I know that brother. I know that brother. I don't want to check anything more than that. Take with your right hand. Say Alhamdulillah, you're here. If in the UK is gone, my salala, you would hear ting ting from your phone. Three hundred pounds is gone. Two hundred pounds is gone. Ajib. Hey, seriously, you're finished. Allah, you know this is in Dubai. This is what really makes us different from other countries. The safety. That you find over here. Ajib. If you compare to any other countries, my, you can't even leave your car key inside your car. Have you You're scared. Yeah. Well, I don't want to mention any name. Just keep it, keep it. Hey, <laughs> Allah, it is the whole world. But over here, alhamdulillah, you don't find it. Ni'ma. Ni'ma. Uh, Tayammum is a dry ablution using sand or dust, which can be performed in a place as a substitute to ghusl and wudu, if no clean water is available. Question, how do we know that a water is not clean? Two things. This is the color of water. If anything other than that come in a different color, it's not water. If the color of the water and the smell of the water changes, then this water is not pure. If a water's color and smell changes, then the water is not pure. You cannot perform wudu with it, neither ghusl. If ever, and I want to make it easy, any water that's flowing and is going from one place to the other, they're pure. Why? Because they are moving. They're not stable water. The sea water is pure. River water is pure. Any kind of water that's that's you know that's flowing away is pure, moving. But if a water in a dam, for example, or the water are just stable, they don't use, they don't move. In this, you can see the bird comes in, the animal will come in, people can do stuff on it, and the water does not move, it is in a pool. In this case, we do not make wudu with this water because the water is not moving. Definitely, this kind of water, the smell and the color of it are different 
So this kind of water are known to be impure. So if ever there are no water, all the water that we have is impure, in this case, we perform tayammu. We're going to speak about that. When we spoke about wudu, we said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha qumtum ila salati faqsidu wujuhakum. We spoke about the ayah satul ma'idah. Huh? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about ghusr. So we were ghusr last week. Huh? Today we speak about tayammu. When Allah says, فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا فَمْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَفُونَ الْغَفْرُ اللَّهِ This is mentioned in the Quran. And when you find no water, فَرْفُمْ تَيَمُّمْ with clean earth and rub your face and your hand. If you find no water, which we're going to speak about now, when do we don't find water? All right? This is something that we need to understand. Tayammum is that sometimes people don't know when to do it and how to do it. And sometimes they may do it, but they don't know that they have the chance of making it. Thank you. Whenever we are in a situation when there is no water, and we want to speak about now, when do we perform Tayyamun? Whenever there is no water, and we either want to perform wudu or ghusl, and there is no water available, in this case, we perform Tayyamun. Number one. But sometimes, you may have water. You have a bottle of water. But then you're on a journey, you're on a travel, but you've got this water only with you and you have to pray. What do you do in this case? Do you drink, do you use that water for wudu or you keep it for drinking? Keep it for drinking because your life comes first. There's no alternative. If you're gonna die, you're gonna die. But if ever there's no water, you can make tayammum, sah? So therefore, if ever you have insufficient water, then in this case, you can perform tayammu. All right? This is something we need to understand. Number two, when using water causes a health risk. Do you know that sometimes when you use water, it can even kill you? Sometimes you do some kind of uh, crafting in your skin, Doctor tell you, make sure you don't touch water. Yes? And one of the Sahabi, he passed away. He became impure, got a wet dream, and it was very, very cold. It came from Salat al-Fajr. And he asked someone that this and this happened to him, what did he do? He said, go and do ghusl. Because of that wrong fatwa, he passed away. The water was so cold. It was in the desert and a travel. He went and he made ghusl, like how we mentioned last week. And because of that, he passed away. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not approve this. How many times you may find, okay, the place where we are now, we have heater, yes or no? In how many places in the world where it is very, very cold and there is no heater in the morning and perhaps it could be maybe Kashmir, who knows? It's very cold there, yes? In Chechnya or Bosnia or Alaska or America, whatever. And then there is no heater. And you know if you're going to make wudu or ghusl with this water, you are going to get sick. <clears throat> In this case, what do you do? You perform to him. But you have to be sure. There are two ways over here. Either you're lazy to touch the cold water, or you know that touching the cold water is going to make you sick, serious sickness. Then in this case, you perform to him. Number three is when the water is impure. 
You may have, mashallah, a big pond of water, but the water is impure. Dogs are drinking from it. People are throwing rubbish into it. The house people have urinated into it because it's a pond. The water is not flowing. In this case, the water is impure. You cannot perform wudu in this water. صح? And there's no other water around. What do you do in this case? Tayyamu. And the scholars, because we have to understand for how long, for how many distance we need to know in order to figure out when can I make tayammum or until I can reach the water. The scholar says, make it as 1.5 kilometers. If ever you are over here, in your building, and you know there's no water in your building. But you know downstairs there's grocery, yes sir. Supermarket, all water around. In this case, you go by water. All right? If ever for 1.5 kilometers there's no water, then what do you do? You perform? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make it easy. This is when you perform. Tayyamun. How do we perform Tayyamun? Do we perform Tayyamun by saying, having the intention first? And then we say, Bismillah. We have hadith around it. And we have different opinions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned over here, فَمْسَحُوا بِوُجُوهِكُمْ وَأَيْدِيكُمْ Yes. Allah says, wipe over your face and your hand. Yes. Yes, sir. How do we do it? So we have the intention. We say, Bismillah. We tap our hand on anything that comes from the earth or earth, like soil, Sand, clay, limestone, dust, soil, walls made of mud. You know, there's some walls made of mud. mud oh, I'll tell you now. Walls made of mud, stone or bricks? Bricks. I repeat. On what object can we make tayammum? Sand, soil, clay, limestone, dust. The walls that are made of mud, they become solid, yes, sir. It's mud. Stone and bricks. These are the things that you can make tayammum upon. How do we do tayammum? Intention, we say Bismillah. We tap both of our hands on the sand, يعني, tap, and then blow it away, pass over your face and over your hand. One time here, one time here. That's it. We have other opinion, we say, for example, you tap, you tap on the sand. And then you blow it on your face. And then you tap one more time. And then on your hands, both hands. Both can be done. The most asah is that you do only one time. Tap your hand on the sand or the soil or the stone or whatever. And then the dust. You're not going to put the dust over your face. Just blow it. And then pass over your face. And one time over your hand. And one time on the left. Simple. This is tayammum. This has replaced either your ghusl or your wudu. Either your ghusl or your wudu. Now, I know you're going to have a lot of questions. Perhaps later we can take it. But in the other message, the question of what about one of the brothers said over here, the wall around me. This is not made of mud. This paint. Can I make tayammum over it? No. Paint, you can't make tayammum over paint. 
But if ever there's no other alternative, no sand and no soil, no limestone, no clay for all of you, then if the wall has dust, you can make over it. Pass your hand over the dust of the wall, blow, face, right, and left. Simple as that. This is the way of making tayammum as per the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once we have made tayammum, it is as if we have made wudu. We can go and pray our prayers. Now, when does our tayammum break? Or until when we can keep the tayammum? Your tayammum break just like wudu breaks. Like how we mentioned last time, passing of the wings, whatever come out of the private parts, eating the camel meat, and then... Uh... And when does your tayammum break as well? When water has been found. When water has been found, alas, your wudu is, yo, tayammum is broken. In this case, you had to go make wudu. If ever, I made tayammum and then I prayed. And after the prayer, I got water. What do I do? The prayer which I prayed is valid. Now for the next prayer you have to make, no more wudu. All right? What actually breaks tayammum, whatever breaks wudu, breaks tayammum. In addition to that, is when water is found, now I'm able to make wudu with water. At that moment, my tayammum has been broken and I have to do wudu over say. All right? This is something in regards to tayammum. One day, the hadith of uh, Amr bin As. Again, uh, they were on a safar campaign in that is the on a campaign in the desert. Amr bin As, he got up, he had a wet dream. And he knows that if ever he were to make a ghusl in that cold weather, he would die. He knew. So what did he do? He performed tayammum and then he betrayed Imam for the people. He made Imam for the people. So some Sahaba went back to the Prophet Muhammad and said, Ya Rasulullah, Amr bin As, he became Junub. And on top of that, he made tayammum. And on top of that, he led us in prayer. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa called Amr bin As. Is this what you did? He said, yes, Ya Rasulullah. And he said, what has kept me away from ghusl is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't kill yourself. Upon this, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he smiled. He smiled. And he said, surely Allah the most merciful say anything. Indeed Allah is the most merciful. For Nabi he smiled. And his smile in silence means his approval. This is what happened. For therefore, these are actually being backed by the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But these are the things that we need to understand in regards to uh, tayammum. How tayammum was established? I can read that. Aisha radiallahu anha said, I borrowed a necklace from Asma and it was lost. Aisha borrowed a necklace from, his, from her sister, Asma bin al -Bakir. So the Prophet Muhammad sallam sent a man to search for it and he found it. Then the time of the prayer became due and there was no water. 
They prayed with their ablution and they informed the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this is when the verse of Tayyamum was revealed. They prayed without wudu. And at that moment, this is when فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طَيِّبًا If you do not find water, then you make the tayammum with the dry earth. So then uh, Usayb bin Hudayr said to Aisha, may Allah reward you. By, by Allah, whenever anything happened which you did not like, Allah brought good for you and for the Muslims in that. But it tells you over here that these are backed by the Quran and the Sunnah. And again, not only for that, even for people, for example, who are injured, for example, making wudu, let's say, for example, over plastered and bandage. How do you wipe over them or simply do it anymore? The view of the fuqaha and the tabi'een in regards to bandage. Ibn Umar did wudu when his hand was bandaged. Ibn Umar, he did wudu when there was bandage in his hand. So he wiped over it and over the bandage. And he washed everything else. And he said, this is sound in narrative of Ibn Umar. Listen. This is what happened to us sometimes recently. If ever we have a bandage in our foot or in our hand, wherever, perhaps the places where we perform wudu, we make normal wudu and normal ghusl. When it comes to that place, just wipe away it one time. That's it. This is something that we can do when it comes to the bandage. But if ever there's any other disease, but the doctor tells you, do not touch water for two, three days. In this case, sometimes you're burned, yes sir. I know some people, they have the burn, 50%, 35%, crafting. At that time, you do not touch water. In this case, you perform to him until you're able to. No problem at all. All right? This is in regards to Tehemu. Question that I got over there is that sometimes we are on the plane and we cannot perform wudu because maybe they've closed the toilet or there's no water sometimes or they're about to land. Sometimes they close the washroom 20 minutes before and then the sun is about to rise, they have to pray fajr and there's no water at all. And there's no connection and no link to get water. In this case, you perform to him because there's no access to water. Anywhere you find dust, you perform tayammum. One of the guy, he asked me a question in regards to if you're on a highway. Not here, maybe in the West. And then he can't, there's no water and he can't get to any petrol pump because the time of Salah is about to be over. Can he stop and make tayammum? Yes, he stopped. Make tayammum on the ground, on the sand, on the soil. Make tayammum. And then you pray. But you see over here, tayammum actually make you realize the importance of salah. It make you realize even though you cannot touch water, you make tayammum. But your salah has to be on time. Even though there's no water, there's salah for you. All right? This is something that we wanted to discuss about today. And if you've got any question, let me know. If any soil is dry, they are clean. If any sand is dry, they are clean. Just look for a place where we got some dust. Dust. Look for dust, you will find some dust somewhere. On the plane, yeah. You will find some dust somewhere. Just look for some dust. Back of civics, sometimes you have water, but around it's dirty and people are sweating, or you know, like you have wet soil, stagnant water. Yeah, I said so this. Scenario, we can still do water with that clean water. Where is clean water? Like you have clean water coming from the tap, 
but around it we have puddles of water which we don't know whether clean. No, in this case you have to because in this case the water is there and then access towards the water. And it could be dirty to get towards the water, but this is totally fine. This is not an excuse for you to make the ammo. Around it, like clean your feet, then you put your feet on uh, wet water, wet look. soil. And that's okay. Yes, as long as you, you make your ammo. And then, if ever you feel that you're going to the Prophet, he did ghusl, and then later he washed his feet. Because if ever you're going to go there with your slippers, yes or no? I think a person, if they know that after wudu, they're going to walk back on the mud that's not clean, they had to take the precaution. They wear the shoes or they wear slippers. You know what I'm saying? But you cannot just go there, make wudu, and then come in that dirty mud barefooted. If you have to do it, then you come out there, get a bottle of water, then wash it again. You understand what I'm saying? No problem. If you go, you want to combine and you want to combine your prayers and then uh, shorten your prayers, you make the emblem before that, same like wudu. Just like wudu. Let me just check online with anyone. Yes. Any water that is not flowing, yeah, and you look at the water, the smell is different and the color is different, then don't make wudu with it. Okay? If it, if it is still and then you know that uh, the water, the, the smell is clean and the color is like water, then you make wudu. Yes, Naam. Yes. Yes. We spoke about Masih, I think two weeks ago. If ever, wearing the, making wudu over, making or wiping over the socks or the hijab or the imama, the imama and this khuf is actually narrated in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, what we mentioned last time. The Prophet Sallam was in a travel and then they wanted to remove his khuf. He said, leave them for verily I wore it when I was instead of wudu. Great. So if ever someone is traveling or is going to his office or school or university or whatever, who's going simply going out, shopping, and then he or she knows that they're going to be outside for the rest of the prayers for Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, I'm going to be outside. They can wear their socks while they're in a state of wudu. And the socks is above the ankle and it is kind of thick. Not too thin that you can see the feet. These three criteria are there, then khalas. When it comes to salah time, you broke and you wudu, you make wudu and then you wipe over your sock one time. One time. Put water in the wipe over it. You have 24 hours to do this. If ever you haven't removed your socks. Above the ankle. This is the first condition. Let me just get this. A patient who is admitted in the hospital and not able to use water, how should he perform to him as there is no dust around in the hospital room? There will be. If ever you can't let someone from your family bring some dust from outside. Here in Alhamdulillah, in the country over here, they will bring dust or sand or soil. Over there, if you really, because if someone really wants to pray, yeah, you can ask someone just bring some so I'll just to touch it, and he will do his wudu. No problem at all. This will be dirt. It won't be soil. If ever, if you feel that there are a lot of this soil, dry soil, in your shoes, you want to remove them and make it. No problem. It's actually so. It's it's clean. No problem. What will one do when have fever and she should take ghusl for major impurity like ghusl after menses? If ever someone has fever and uh, there is no heater and the water is very cold, she will not be able, she's fearing, oh, she's putting her life into risk by making ghusl. In this case, she performed 
tayammum, she will know. If a person, if a person knows that now I need to perform ghusl, but if I go and do ghusl now, 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 the water is very cold and there's no hater. And if I do, I'm going to fall sick. But I'm already having fever. In this case, you perform ghusl, you pray, and later during the day, when you know you're able to make ghusl with the water, then you make ghusl with the water, inshallah. Both. Both ghusl and tayammum, it, uh, that's the alternative, inshallah. So, uh, the sand has to be natural, right? Just the sand, uh, yes, anything from the earth. Like powder. Not, no, everything like natural stone, mud, soil, sand. Mud is dry mud, huh? <laughs> sand, soil, uh, limestone, clay. Yeah, these are the things that you can perform table on. Oh, bricks. bricks also no problem. Bricks, you can steal from the rock. I, I have water. Yes. Yeah. No, the moon can't be made with water. Even though you have a little bit of water, no, no, it has to be dust. So I didn't tell you, but Allah mentioned the Quran. Dry this. All right? Barakallahu feekum wa jazakum Allah khayra. Subhanaka Allah wa bihamdik. Shadu wa la ilaha ila ant. Stahu thuruka wa tubu ilayku. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu feekum. Barakallahu Allah. Shukran, shukran. Sahiyyaka Allah. Barakallahu feekum. Barakallahu You okay? You remind me of Spider-Man. <laughs> Let me just. Yeah.